Now then guys, welcome to the Proper Performance Studio. Um, in this video, I'm gonna take you through a warm up, and that's gonna be a warm up for the strength and conditioning session that I use for my endurance athletes. Okay, so um, I'm running a class for endurance athletes three times a week. This is essentially the warm up that we go through uh, when we come in and train. Okay, so it includes three different sections, and then we'll talk about the fourth as it relates to the session. You've got your raise section, um, you've got your mobilize section, and you've got your activate section. We tick them three boxes, and then we'll go to go and ready for our session okay what I will say is this warm-up is reasonably long ticks quite a few boxes um, but what I will suggest you do is if you refer to our other video on warming up it's definitely on Instagram I think it might be on YouTube as well but essentially what it does it talks about and um, basically how to design your own warm-up around how you're feeling and around what you've got in the session okay so that's a really useful resource especially if you're quite short for time and you want to just make sure you tick the right boxes for a warm-up and um, you can refer to that and then you could you know use that to analyze this one that we go through here and maybe see the areas that you need to uh, you need to make sure that you're doing um, before you start your training okay so first of all we've got a race section and it's going to be uh, a loosen up first okay so what I'm going to say about this is this is what I'll do in a class and um, we've obviously only got one row one uh, one bike um, but essentially if you want to come in the gym you know when you just want to go on the assault bike do some skipping incline treadmill stairmaster something like that that's a fine way of, of loosening up as well getting some blood flow increasing your body temperature so if you wanted to do that instead you could swap that for five ten minutes on there for this warm-up okay i really like this because it gets the whole body moving gives me an idea of what the class is like in terms of the balance and coordination so i'll take you through it like i said if you don't want to go through this you can swap it for assault bike skip stepper uh, incline treadmill something like that i don't suggest the roller or bike because you don't get the balance component uh, but you know something like that would would do okay so to start with we just do a bit of a shake out so just letting that body shake out getting a sense of how we are okay moving things around maybe we've just woken up maybe we've just been at the desk all day you know we're feeling pretty pretty stiff so just trying to take that tension out of the body have a little move around wiggle the jaw okay shake it out so we'll do that for 30 seconds to a minute okay from there we've got our hinge and reach so we're going to hinge down bums going back we're feeling that stretch of the hamstrings and then we engage and reach the sky exhales i reach the sky to draw the ribs down and we'll do about 10 reps in there okay from there we've got hip circles so we start with forward hip circles so i'm getting my balance and then i'm coming through this motion here so if i imagine that i'm drawing a circle with my knee that's essentially what that hip circle action at the front is going to be doing now if i'm getting a bit of pinching and clicking in my hips i might start with small reps and then i could build them up as i go Okay, again, about 10, 15 each side. If you don't want to do your arms, you can just stick them on your waist, although they do help you to balance. Okay, then we go through the back as well. So from here, like leg comes back behind me and I circle around. So you're getting the glutes engaged a bit more. Again, if you're clicking, small reps to start with and then you can build them up. And if I'm doing a class, it gives me a sense to see, you know, what's people's coordination like, what's their range of motion like, what's the balance like, just gives you that bit of an idea. Okay, from there we've got knee cycles. So from here, I'm gonna pull the floor, keeping my toe pulled up towards my shin, circle around. So I'm trying to pull the floor just beneath me, cycle around and just have a brief pause in this position before I go again. Really getting the hamstrings nice and warm. Again, balance. Body awareness. Okay, on the side as well. Do about 10, 15 in here, sometimes 20. Okay, from there we've got neck and shoulder rolls. So inhale, I'm rolling my hands in, looking down. Exhale, I'm opening up, 
rotating the palms back or out. Mobilizing for the neck, shoulders, and thoracic spine. And if you feel particularly tight in any of these areas, just ease into them. Just nice and slow with your range of motion. If you start to feel any pain in any positions, just stop where you are, gradually bring it back, and just ease through the movement more. If you feel quite free, then you can obviously emphasize the movement a little bit more. Okay, we've then got straddle rotations, the old gymnastics favorite. So we take a straddle position, nothing too wide. You know, we don't want any Rob Van Dams. Um, it's not Rob Van Dam, is it? It's John Claude. I can't remember his name, but I'm sure you've seen the video between the two Volvos. Anyway, straddle position, and um, from there, I'm reaching down for my opposite foot. If you can't get there, just reach towards it and then reach my opposite arm to the sky. Okay. We'll do about 20 to 30 in here. And then from there, to finish off, I've got my side bends. Same position, bum tight, like I'm between two walls, so I'm not arching back. And I'm gonna reach to the corner of the room. Exhale. Other corner. And just bring your arm inside your leg. Getting that nice stretch through the shoulders, lats, um, and through the obliques and QLs. Okay. And shake it off, that'll do, that's your race section done. So again, you can swap that for a, for a skip or um, salt bike, etc. cetera. Um, what I would suggest is, yeah, you know, you spend five, 10 minutes doing that. Um, as you've probably seen, I've got a little bit of breathlessness on from doing their movements. It's obviously got my full body moving as well. It's giving me a sense of where different joints and parts of my body's at. Okay, let's now move into the mobilized section. So the emphasis here is to, um, you know, mobilize some of them key areas, make sure we've got a good um, range of motion and are we feeling nice and stable. Um, in set joints we're going to be working through the session so with my endurance uh, snc for endurance program um we do four body sessions okay we, we, we do daily undulating currently we do undulating periodization so we have a strength day uh, muscle endurance day and a power day okay but it's full body every day so i want all my joints to be um, to be nice and it's nice and mobilized so this first one um, I'm going to take a split stance position, okay? I'm then going to rock over. So I've got my ankle stretched a little bit, and then I'm just going to raise right up onto my toes, control down, raise up, control down, working through the foot and ankle. Not only getting that nice, taking it through a nice full range of motion, but also building that stability and control around the joint. Okay, if we want to make it harder, we can go into a low lunge position just off the floor. Again, rocking into it and we can do it through there. Okay, from there I've got my, so that's my foot and ankle, just do that exercise, about 10 each side. If it's too difficult, we could go into a static stretch, hold for about 10 seconds, rock out, and do that maybe three times. Um, from there we've got hip and knee. Okay, so I'll start off with my mountain climbers. So from here, hands nice and close, legs come in just outside the hand. If you just get to here, that's fine too. Try and keep your heel down as best you can. Back leg straight, and then I'm gonna draw the back leg down. Try and really bring my chest up. Swap sides, straight leg, and then draw it down. Bring my chest up, knee forwards. And I'll do about 10 reps in here. Okay, next one is our frog stretch or hockey stretch or adductor stretch, whatever you want to call it. From here, the knees are apart, the toes are outwards. I go into a, a wide position, but nothing crazy. You know, you want to be sort of reasonably okay in this position to start with. And then you're trying to orient your pelvis up. So imagine you've been pulled up from a rope here. So that pelvis is tilting this way. And we're gently rocking back and forward to start with. No more than 30 seconds in here. I can try going to one side to work more into the right. Okay, I can drop the elbows to increase the range of motion slightly. Obviously rocking my forward and back. And also play with contracting inwards 
to squeeze my adductors and then contracting outwards, squeeze my outside glutes and stretch my adductors more. Okay, so there's a few things you can play with in there. Slowly coming out from there. Then I go into my couch stretch, okay? Because we're doing this in a class, I, you know, I don't want to take the time to get people against the wall, so I'll just do this freestanding, okay? But obviously you could put your foot up against something. Um, you could also just do a regular lunge if this is too difficult. From here, nice and tall, pushing that hip forwards, tilting the pelvis under. It's the opposite of the, uh, of the frog stretch there. And then I'm just gonna rock forwards, pull my heel in towards my bum, hold that for a few seconds, okay? and then swapping sides. I find doing a couple of sets each side, just short, short holds quite good because I like to see people get in and out of this position. It gives me an idea of sort of how mobile and how much control they've got over the joints and then ranges. Okay, um, and then from there, the last one for the hip and knee is our Cossack squat. So, all we're doing, taking that straddle stance again. You might have to play with it a little bit to find your sweet spot. And then you can use the floor to assist you if you want to. Coming down to this position, the toe goes up to the sky. We're trying to keep that heel down, chest up. And then I travel to the opposite side. Okay, obviously if you can, you can go without any assistance. Trying to stay upright here. Working through the hamstring, adductors, ankles. Really nice one. Okay, from the side. Okay, that's the hip and knee. Finishing off the uh, mobilized section with the shoulders and thoracic spine. So I'm gonna start with my diamond stretch. I'm taking a diamond position with my hands. They're going out in front of me. And then from there, knees come a little bit further back than my hips. I'm just gonna keep my eyes on my hands, sit back, and then rock forwards again. This should stretch through the lats, thoracic spine. So keep the abs tight here so you're not just arching your back. Generally, I like to do some overhead things in RS and C sessions. This starts to warm them shoulders up in that position. Okay, you can have a little hold in that bottom position if you like. And um, from there, we've got to thread the needle. So, all fours. One hand comes a little bit more central. Other hand, back of the head. We're reaching down towards the elbow and then up towards the sky. The eyes follow the elbow. Okay, I'll do about five to 10 each side, sometimes with a hold in the last rep. This is taking me through thoracic rotation. Okay, and the last one for the uh, upper body is our prone raise and reach. So, Microphone might go a bit distorted, but I'm gonna lie on my front, raise my hands up, reach overhead, and then come back to here and lower down. So it's as if I'm in a push-up position, head just off the floor, feet down, right? And then the hands are gonna raise up, reach ahead, overhead, come back to that push-up position, lower down. Okay, again, I'll do about five to 10 in there. Really nice to get them shoulders activated in the main range of positions. Okay, good. So um, that's me through the mobilized section. Um, and then I'm gonna finish with the activated section. So I say activated. Um, now we're getting a little bit more multi-joint, getting the whole system moving as one, making things a bit more intense. And this is obviously the final piece before we then get into uh, the training itself. Okay, I use this activated section to tick some boxes, right? So um, in a session, I don't wanna spend all session doing plyometrics, so I'll do a little bit before each session. So I'll put them in the activate session. Um, if you're a cyclist uh, or a swimmer, plyometrics might not be the wisest thing for you. If you're a swimmer, you might do more theraband shoulder work. Um, if you're a cyclist, um, you might do some more, maybe some isometrics um, in, in certain positions, in key positions that you're gonna be pushing through. Um, but 
for a runner, you know, or, or a, um, you know, someone who spends a lot of time in the hill, the fell runner, plyometrics are going to be a really good thing to, to include. What is shown so far in the research is efficiency with your running, okay? Brings that stiffness to the, to the ankles um, and, and makes you more efficient with each stride, okay? So you can basically go for longer or, or go at the same pace with less energy, okay? So that you're becoming more efficient. So start with our leaps, um, watch for beams. From there, we're just gonna have a little line here. So if I'm in the class, I'll just say, right, use the line and you're gonna go in front and behind the line. Short contact on the floor. We'll do that for about 30 seconds. Okay, have a little shake out and then we'll go side to side from the line. Leaves are on two legs. So they're the most stable. Okay, most people, depending what level they're at, most people can come in and, and do the leaps okay, which is two legs to two legs. Okay, once I've done them leaps, I like to give people a little rest before they go into another lot of plyometrics, certainly that area anyway. So I'll do a few walkouts. So I've done my leaps, feet together on the spot, reaching down, walking out as far as I can, holding that for a few seconds. So you're feeling the abs engage, feeling the lats engage, walking in. And I might get people to do two or three there. Okay, but emphasizing that long position and getting that nice ab engagement. From there, we've got the bounce. We do these side to side, especially in a room like this, not so big. You're not gonna get people running up and down. So side to side for the bounds. So again, I'll get them to maybe use a square, right? So something like this, go from line to line. Okay, and all it is here, one leg. Again, short contact time. So we're shifting quickly from one side to the other. Like you're running downhill and you're weaving it out the trail, weaving over rocks. Okay, if you wanna, Chowing someone's bounce a bit more, you can start getting them to touch the floor. Obviously you'll spend longer on the floor that way, but it makes it a little bit more challenging. Okay, as you can see, they get the breath going. There are bounds. Um, from there again, like I said, I don't want people to go straight into the plyometric, so we'll do the next um, little, little piece. So glute bridges, if someone's not done them before, or they're quite new, two legs, squeeze, control down, straightforward enough, okay? From there, if they do it for a while, it's pretty easy for them, I'll get them to hold the leg, and they'll go one leg. Obviously that makes it harder, but also adds that little bit of rotational element as well. Okay, and obviously, swapping sides. Okay, nice one to get the glutes and hamstrings working. The final plyometric is our hops. It's this one, depending on where you are, might be a little bit too intense. Okay, so it might be that you just do the leaps again. Um, but if you can, the hops is one leg to one leg. So leap, two to two, bound, one to one, one to the other, like running, and then hop, one to one. Okay, so hops, essentially forward to backwards again. You know, 20, 30 seconds, obviously both sides, and then we'll go side to side. Same sort of time. Okay, normally one set, sometimes two. All I'll finish off with, final part of the Activate session, is a set of push-ups, okay? We don't always get a chance to do push-ups in the sessions. I like people to have strong upper bodies. I expect everyone who I get in to be able to do at least, well, my standard for the health um, assessment is 20 push-ups, so, you know, that's not an easy target. So I like to get people to come in, make sure they do at least a set of push-ups. So obviously you can do these kneeling, you can do these on an incline, you can do them with a band around your waist. Um, but obviously in the class setting, it'll be kneeling or, uh, or a regular one because of um, you know space and, and simplicity. From here, we get nice and tight, controlling down, sternum to floor, push the floor away. Okay, I'll just say, right, do a set until you feel it a bit. That might be three or four, that might be 10. If you still don't go in, all the classes up and having a drink, getting ready, then you're probably gonna stop. Right, I just want people ticking that box, getting their feel for that movement. And the cue that I'll normally give a push up, right, push the floor away. That keeps everything nice and tight, and it keeps in that nice pressing position. You wouldn't try and push the floor away as hard as you can in this position. I don't think you'd be, you'd be in here, okay, which is where we wanna be for our push ups. 
Good stuff, guys. That's our raise, mobilize, activate. The only bit that I didn't mention was the prime section. The prime section, in this case, warm-up sets, right? If we're doing box squat as the first exercise, our warm-up sets will be the prime section, okay? Um, and that would take us through them four different aspects of our warm-up, so it's a complete warm-up. As I said, refer back to some of the old videos. It talks about how to go through a warm-up and how to individualize it to you. This was a good example of how I'd warm up my uh, endurance athletes, which are predominantly runners. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found that helpful. Any questions, any thoughts, you know, if you have any disagreements on how I've done it or anything like that, just post a comment. Thanks very much for watching. Enjoy your training and uh, I'll see you soon.